Tracking wedges provide a great benefit in the fact that you can make small adjustments with very good precision. The exact number, it's three and a half inches of wedge is equivalent to one degree of tab. So if you were to do only one inch of tracking wedge, that's equivalent to about a quarter of a degree of tab. Terry, have you ever tried to bend a tab by a quarter of a degree? Yeah, uh, several times, and it's, it's really luck of the draw. As the tabs get aged or they get softer or harder, they spring back. So it's, it's quite difficult to even sometimes get a half a degree. Now, how difficult is it to cut a wedge to one inch? It's just as simple as grabbing a pair of scissors. <laughs> so, uh, Dan, I've tracked for the better part of 25 years with all kinds of different equipment. Uh, all different tab tools and stuff, but I, I, I haven't heard of the wedges. Where, how did they come about? When the Army decided that they wanted to put a new improved rotor blade on the AH-64 Apache, they decided to look at other options and uh, somebody had the idea to come up with these tracking wedges. The Army adopted it and developed it for a couple of other helicopters as well and it's gotten to the point where their maintainers much prefer tracking wedges for their reliability, for their uh, fine adjustment capability. They now have over two million hours of service in the Army. Wow, that's so quite a bit of flight hours. We are the first commercial customer that is adopting the tracking wedge and we'll be providing it as a better solution to our trim tabs. So now we're gonna go ahead and review what you get from Van Horn Aviation with your main rotor blades to allow you to achieve track and balance. So this is a uh, main rotor wedge kit. It comes in a nice sealed package. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and open it up and see what you got. We have four items in here. First thing is the wedge, star of the show. So it comes as a six inch wedge and it has the backer, which protects the adhesive, and it also has uh, demarcation lines for each inch of the wedge. And uh, this allows you to cut it to the length that you need. So let's say you only need four inches of wedge, which is about equivalent to one degree of tab. Um, you would cut it with some scissors and prepare the bonding surface on your blade for that size of wedge. And to do that, you have your isopropyl alcohol wipes and you have your sanding pad. Step one, take the wipe out and you clean the surface of your blade. Step two, you sand the bonding surface of the blade. And then step three, you clean off the sanded surface. And then once that surface is clean, it is ready to bond on your tracking wedge. Okay, so once you start your track and balance runs, you're gonna use the wedges in the same format that you're used to. We have our polar charts, which you can find on vanhornaviation.com under Tech Pubs. And uh, this is just a sample of it. It's gonna be pretty much the same layout, except you'll notice you have a section for wedges that tells you how many inches of wedges you need based on the IPS imbalance and it also has pitch links. So you'll use the two in combination. So Dan, how does the wedges and the pitch links work with each other? So it's the same way that the pitch links and the trim tabs have always worked with each other. When you install the blades, there's gonna be some vertical vibration. And if you see that vertical vibration at the low speed and the high speed, you're gonna wanna do a pitch link adjustment. Once you get the vertical vibration out of the low speed, but you still have some at the high speed, that's when you want to look at your tracking wedges and you'll dial that in based on what the chart tells you to do. So basically if a tab is flying higher or lower as you increase airspeed, that's when we're gonna to wanna to bring in the wedges. Exactly, okay. yes. So we did our first flight and we came up with an IPS of 0.28 at a three o'clock position on the polar chart. What does that mean to us, Dan? Well, so I plotted it on our chart and it looks like if we do a, you know, four to six inches of tracking wedge, it should put us right about where we want to be. 
So would I automatically go to six inches? Well, you want to err on the lower side because once you put a tracking wedge on there, you can't adjust it on the blade and you can't reuse that tracking wedge. So if we start at the low end, we can always add more. Okay. And then we won't waste any of our tracking wedges. And installing the four inch piece on the blade, do I put it on the center line of the mark? Right, you will center the four inch piece first. And if we find that we have to add more, we'll split that in half and we'll add it to either side of the already installed pieces. We're gonna take the wedge that's in the kit and it's marked in one inch increments. So I'm just gonna mark out or cut out four inches and I'm gonna save the other two. Okay. Then now we'll go up and then we'll install it. Okay, so now that we've established how much of a, a wedge move we need to make, we'll come up here to the top of the blade and we'll actually mark out the position. On the Jet Ranger 206B blade, the outboard tab position is 49.5 inches, and I've already got it marked, marked out here. The inboard tab position is 121 inches. This is all laid out in our technical bulletin. So I've got it marked out. I'll take the, the four inch piece, I'll set it on the blade, and I'll center it. Then I'll mark it out with a Sharpie. This kind of gives us a rough outline for the tape. Once it's marked out, you'll put a piece of tape on and just use uh, one, about a sixteenth to an eighth from the lines you marked. And what this is doing is giving us a rough area where we can sand and sc or scuff the paint for application of the wedge without messing with any other material around it. We don't want to scuff up the blade paint any more than we have to. Now that I have it taped off, I'm gonna follow the instructions in the packet, which is quite simple. It's step one, you clean the area. Once the area is cleaned, you'll take your Scotch-Brite pad that's labeled step two, and you'll lightly abrade the surface area. The reason we're taping it off is we don't need to scuff any more of the blade area other than where we're going to apply the wedge. Once that step's done, we'll take the tape off and we'll go to step three, which is the final cleaning. On this process, we're gonna wipe one way in one direction so that we move all the scuff material away from the abraded area. Now we can take our previously cut four inch web wedge piece. We'll remove the adhesive backing and this location is about plus or minus a quarter inch. The full length piece is six inches, but as long as you're within a quarter inch, you're not gonna have a problem. And again, all this is laid out in our technical bulletin. So once I get that off, we don't wanna to touch the adhesive with our fingers. Just hold it on the edges like so. We'll center it on our previously marked spot. And then once that's done, you want to take a, a few seconds here and put positive pressure and firmly adhere the wedge to the blade. And take a little bit of time here and make sure it's pressed in really good. Once you've pressed it solid, you need to let it sit about five, five minutes or so, just to make sure it attaches and uh, adheres firmly. After that, you're good to fly and see how the move went. Okay, so let's say 
the operator wants to put these blades on another, another aircraft. What we recommend in the technical bulletin is to zero everything out. You're used to doing that by zeroing the tabs. How you'll do it with the wedges is just remove the wedges. So removing it is the same, or the reverse. You just grab the corner of it, peel up slowly, and once you have all of them off, you will take these wedges and you will throw them away. They are a one-time use only. Rest of the instructions are in the technical bulletin. Happy tracking.